Hey, thanks for tuning in. You know, Holy Week is right around the corner. And it's at this time of year that a lot of people, a lot of skeptics are going to come out of the woodwork. They're going to try to poke holes in the narrative of what happened during Holy Week. They're going to try to say the Bible contradicts itself. They're going to say that the Bible is inconsistent. They're going to say that there are all types of things to make us doubt what happened during Holy Week. The most important week of the whole Bible and those authors of the Gospels can't get it all right. They're not all on the same page. That's what they're going to say. But is it true? What I'm going to do today is I'm going to point out their three big arguments, three big holes, three big contradictions that they say is happening during Holy Week, and I'm going to point out that there are no holes. The Bible is God-breathed. The Bible is inerrant, and the Bible does not contradict itself. So here's the issue. Go on and get your Bible. You're going to be looking in the four Gospels and pause this video if you need to go grab your Bible. We're going to be looking in the four Gospels and their narrative of what happens during Holy Week. We're going to keep this really short. We're not going to read it word for word because I know that you're pressed for time and you want this quick and to the point. So let's go to Matthew 26, verse 2. It says that the Jewish leadership was meeting to scheme about Jesus exactly how many days? Two days before Passover regarding Jesus being handed over. That means it is a Tuesday. Mark 14 also says the Jewish leadership was meeting to scheme about Jesus exactly how many days? Two days before Passover regarding Jesus being handed over. That means it is a Tuesday. Now, Luke 22 doesn't give a day, but it lists Judas discussing the betrayal of Jesus with the Jewish leadership in between the Olivet Discourse and the Last Supper. Now, we come to John 14. He is specific. It says there were six days, six days before Passover when Jesus came to Bethany. And it also describes Judas leaving to discuss betraying Jesus with the high priest. So that's the first one. Is it two days or six days? That's the first uh, flaw or, or question that they have. Now, there are some other things. Uh, let's go Matthew, back to Matthew 26. Um, it says that the uh, Jesus was eating with Simon the leper. Okay? Mark 14, it says that Jesus was eating with Simon the leper. Luke 22 doesn't say who he's eating with. John 14 says that there was a celebration dinner given and Martha served. So was it Mary? And Martha, or was it Simon the leper? Whose house was it? Simon the leper, or was it Mary and Martha? The third thing that they're going to bring up is this. Matthew 26 talks about Jesus eating and a woman pouring perfume on his head. The disciples complain about it. Jesus rebukes them. Okay, Mark 14, it talks about a woman pouring, pouring perfume on Jesus's head. The disciples complain about it. Jesus rebukes them. Judas leaves. Luke 22 doesn't say anything about it. John 14 says that Mary poured perfume on the feet of Jesus. The disciples complain. Jesus rebukes them. Judas leaves. So was it the perfume being poured on Jesus's head? or Jesus's feet. And so they're going to point to those three things, three issues. Did Judas approach the Jewish leadership two days before the Passover or six days? Did Jesus eat at Martha's house or Simon the leper's house? And did Jesus get his head anointed or did he get his feet anointed? All those seem to contradict each other, but do they really contradict each other? The answer is no, they do not. They do not. So here's what you've got in Matthew and Mark. We've got this, this time, it is two days before Passover. And the Jewish leadership is discussing, they're putting their final plans in place on how to capture Jesus. But the problem is this. How can these Jewish leaders 
be plotting to capture Jesus by stealth when he is away from the crowds and he has been able to avoid them for three years. How do they know where he is? How do they know what his timeline is? How do they know anything? Ah, they are two days before Passover and they have an inside man. Four days before they're making these final plans, Judas had come to them. And that's what Matthew and Mark are talking about. They say, it's two days before, flashback, let me tell you how they can even start planning. Let me tell you what happened six days before Passover, four days ago. And then they talk about the dinner and they talk about Judas approaching the Jewish leadership. That is not a contradiction. That is the same timeline. That is the same time timeline. It's just a flashback. Okay, so here's the next thing. Was it Martha's home or was it Simon the leper's home? The answer that I believe is this. Yes. I, I believe that Simon had Simon the leper, he, he's probably been healed, but that is his moniker now, Simon the leper. He's probably been, been healed on a prior trip to Jerusalem for, by Jesus. And Simon is, we got a couple options. Simon is either married to Martha or Mary, or he is their aged father, or he is their older brother, and they live in his home. So any of those situations could fully explain why some of the authors say that it is Simon the leper's house and others talk about Mary and Martha. Now, finally, this is the last point that they're going to make. Was his head anointed or his feet anointed? The answer is yes, both. Now, we're talking about 2,000 years ago. Their refining process for perfumes is, is not um, is, is high-tech as ours. They're, they're not able to concentrate it to the degree that we are, where you can get a one or two ounce bottle of perfume that is going to uh, last for a very long time. They had to use a more liberal amount of perfume. And this perfume is in an alabaster bottle, and it is worth a year's wages. Now, perfume is expensive, but to use it, you're going to have to use a liberal amount of it. So we're not talking about a one or two ounce bottle here. We are probably talking about two or more cups of perfume, maybe even a pint. And that is certainly enough to anoint both the head and the feet of Jesus since the bottle was broken and the perfume has to go somewhere, right? So there you go. Three supposed contradictions refuted by yours truly. Uh, that's the best that I could do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go on and hit that like, subscribe, notification bell, share it, make a comment. I really do appreciate it. You can trust the Bible. You don't have to worry about it. Trust the Bible. Go on ahead, read it for yourself. Stop reading all those commentaries that tell you what to think about it and read it for yourself. It makes sense. And if you come to a place where you're like, I just don't get it, go on ahead and, and consult a commentary then. But you really do need to read it for yourself. I encourage you to do that. As always, have a great day and be blessed.